Imagine a time machine has just dropped you off 66 million years in the past. The wheeling the uniform direction changes just like a flock of birds evading a predator. Right here, deep in the humid prehistoric forests of what is now the Pacific Northwest, every one of your senses is screaming. The ground beneath your feet starts to tremble, just slightly but steadily, like a massive truck rumbling closer and closer. Don't count on this being a rare encounter. If you're wandering these woods at this time, there's a good chance you'll run into it. This is the kingdom of Tyrannosaurus Rex, the undisputed ruler of this land. Every other creature, no matter how big or fierce, steps carefully when it hears those footsteps or that thunderous roar. You've seen the movies, read the books, but nothing truly prepares you for the feeling of standing face to face with the ultimate apex predator of the Cretaceous. It is without a doubt a perfect killing machine. To understand this apex predator, you first need to understand where it stands. T-Rex walked on two powerful hind legs, its massive body perfectly balanced by a long, heavy tail. These traits placed it in one of the most fearsome and successful groups of dinosaurs ever to walk the earth, the suborder the Rapoda. You've probably heard of some of its cousins like the agile Velociraptor or the ferocious Allosaurus. But forget those images for now. Compared to the beast you're picturing, they're more like wolves standing next to a heavily armed grizzly bear. T-Rex belonged to the royal bloodline of meat eaters, the family Tyrannosauridae. And the creature you're staring down right now is the final, most glorious chapter of the genus Tyrannosaurus. Its ancestors may have been much smaller, faster and reliant on cunning and speed to hunt. But over millions of years, evolution forged them into giants, stronger, more powerful, and perfectly adapted to dominate their prey. Now try to stay on your feet. Can you truly grasp the scale of the things shaking the ground beneath you? Forget the biggest elephants you've ever seen at the zoo. Forget those massive shipping containers on the highway. Next to this beast, they're nothing but toys. To see it properly, you'd have to look up, way up. Just its hips alone stand about four meters tall, roughly the height of a double-decker London bus. Its entire body stretches back a staggering 12 to 13 meters, the length of a full-sized school bus. But it's the weight that really messes with your mind. Scientists have estimated a range of numbers, but the most common one, about nine tons, that's the weight of a full-grown male African elephant plus a luxury SUV. Some individuals may have reached 10 tons, the same as the anchor of a massive ocean cruise ship. And if you look up at its head well, you're staring at one of the largest skulls to ever exist on land. It measures up to 1.5 meters long, longer than your bathtub at home. When you take a closer look, you'll notice that its bones are incredibly thick and solid. But here's the amazing part. They're not just heavy for the sake of being heavy. See those large gaps, those windows in the skull. Those aren't just random holes. They're clever design features that help lighten the skull without making it any weaker. The skull bones themselves are tightly fused together, almost as if they've been welded into one solid piece. But why the need for such strong construction? It's not just about protecting that small brain inside. These bones needed to be rock solid because they were anchoring something truly terrifying, the bite force. You're probably wondering just how powerful that bite was. Imagine stacking four full-sized cars on top of each other. The bite force of a T-Rex is estimated to be equal to, or even stronger than, that crushing weight. One chomp could shatter a deer's bones, tear through the hide of a buffalo, or even break the armor of an ankylosaur. 
Just thinking about being trapped between those jaws is enough to send chills down your spine. And there's more. A T-Rex could spot you before you even knew it was there. That's thanks to its massive eye sockets, which faced forward, more like a human's eyes than a lizard's. This gave it something called binocular vision, and it's a deadly advantage. With both eyes focusing on the same object, it could judge depth and distance with shocking accuracy, like having a built-in 3D targeting system. It didn't just see you, it knew exactly how far you were, even if you were just a faint shadow at the edge of its vision. While you're still panicking, scanning the forest with wide eyes, it might already be standing there. And those eyes, they're not just looking, they're evaluating. You might be on the menu. But the eyes of the T-Rex are just one part of its incredibly advanced sensory system. Even if you manage to hide perfectly, slipping out of its line of sight, you're still not safe. Because the most powerful weapon T-Rex had might not have been its vision, it was its nose. Now picture that massive snout. Inside, it's a powerhouse of scent detection. The part of its brain responsible for smell was unusually large, suggesting that its sense of smell was off the charts. It could sniff out a rotting carcass or a living, breathing prey like you from miles away, depending on the wind. The scent of your body, the sweat from your fear, even a small drop of blood from a tiny scratch, it all lights up in the air like a flare. In the world of T-Rex, the atmosphere itself betrays your location. And now, let's focus on the real nightmare. The one thing that seals the fate of anything unlucky enough to get caught. Its teeth. They weren't just sharp, they were monstrous. Each one thick, solid, like a miniature railroad spike or a stone-crushing drill bit. Slightly curved inward, perfectly shaped to grip onto struggling prey. And if you look closer, you'll notice tiny serrations along the edges. Not razor sharp for clean cuts, but jagged and rough designed to tear, to shred, to leave nothing behind but ruin. These weren't just teeth for tearing flesh. This was a destruction toolkit. They were made to punch through thick skin, even pierce the bony armor of other dinosaurs. Once they sank deep into the prey, that inward curve locked the victim in place. Escaping, nearly impossible. And the horror doesn't stop there. The true terror lies in what comes after, the crushing. With the kind of bite force we talked about earlier, those thick teeth didn't just bite, they smashed. Like hammers and anvils working in sync, they drove unimaginable pressure straight into the prey's bones, pulverizing what was once a solid skeleton into a chaotic mess. Imagine your bones trapped in a high-powered hydraulic press. Yeah, that's probably the closest comparison. The T-Rex's ultimate weapon wasn't elegant, it wasn't surgical. It was raw, brutal force, engineered for total annihilation. But then, look down at its chest. You'll notice something that almost feels like a joke. Those arms. If you stretch them out, they'd only be a bit longer than your own adult arms. On a creature that weighs tons, they look absurdly small. And you start to wonder, what were they even for? That's the same question that's puzzled scientists for decades. Too short to bring food to its mouth, too small to help in a struggle with large prey, and honestly, too puny for a body that massive. Some theories suggest they were used to grip writhing prey. Others say they helped the T-Rex push itself off the ground after resting. And there's even a possibility they're evolutionary leftovers, body parts on their way out. No one really knows for sure. It remains one of the biggest and funniest mysteries. The contrast between its overwhelming power and those tiny, useless-looking arms. But then, as your eyes move even lower, all that confusion fades, replaced by pure awe. Because here's where the real power lies. The hind legs the legs of a T-Rex are in a league of their own. 
massive, solid, and built like ancient pillars holding up a stone bridge. Beneath the scaly skin, you'd find thick, dense bone wrapped in layers of bulging muscle. Muscles that ripple with stored energy, ready to unleash raw power at any moment, supporting, lifting, and propelling a body that weighs as much as a truck. And just look at how it stands. Unlike us, T-Rex doesn't plant its whole foot flat on the ground. It walks on its toes, what scientists call digitigrade posture, just like a giant bird. Three thick toes, each armed with a large claw, are its main points of contact with the Earth. They're not just for walking. These toes carry the full weight of a nine-ton beast and still let it move with terrifying speed and balance. By now, you've seen the raw power, the size, and the terrifying weapons of the T-Rex, like something built for destruction. It's the image that movies have burned into our minds, a perfect killing machine. But real science is rarely that simple. And the truth about T-Rex, it's way more complex. For years, paleontologists have been locked in a heated debate. Was T-Rex truly the fearsome apex predator we imagine or just a giant scavenger, a prehistoric vulture of the Cretaceous. Let's look at the case for an active hunter first. Remember its sharp forward-facing eyes with binocular vision. That's a trait seen in predators. It helps track and judge the distance to moving targets. And its powerful body and massive, pillar-like legs, perfect for chasing and taking down struggling, dangerous prey. But the strongest evidence, fossilized bones of dinosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Triceratops have been found with T-Rex bite marks, and those bones healed. That means the dinosaurs were still alive when attacked. They survived the first assault. And that tells us, almost without a doubt, T-Rex went after live prey. Looking at those scars, you can almost picture the brutal life or death struggle that once took place. But just when you're convinced it was a ruthless predator, other clues tell a different story. Its super-sensitive sense of smell. That's something we often see in scavengers. Do you really need such a powerful nose to chase down prey? And then there are the teeth. Thick, crushing teeth that were great not just for biting but for breaking bones, especially to get at the fatty, nutritious marrow inside. That's something we see in scavengers too. Most specialized hunters have sharper, slicing teeth for tearing flesh. So which is it? A hunter? A scavenger? The answer might be both. Just like many large predators today, T-Rex was probably an opportunistic predator. It had the strength, speed, and tools to hunt and kill, especially larger or weaker animals. But it was also smart and practical. If it could find an easy meal in a carcass left lying in the sun, it wouldn't pass that up. After all, in a world as wild and dangerous as the late Cretaceous, survival meant taking every chance you got. If you're picturing a T-Rex zipping around like a tornado, as some movies might have you believe, well, let's clear that up. Scientists have studied its bone structure and muscle mass and estimate its top speed to be somewhere between 17 and 40 kilometers per hour. That's about the pace of a skilled human sprinter or a fast-moving bicycle. Sounds manageable, right? You might even think you could outrun it, but not so fast. Now picture that same speed, only it's coming from a 6 to 10 ton predator. That's like a fully loaded bus barreling straight at you. And most importantly, that speed was plenty fast for what it needed, catching its main prey. Herbivores like Edmontosaurus or Triceratops weren't exactly track stars. T-Rex didn't need to be cheetah fast. It just needed to be faster than its lunch. And with legs spanning meters at a time, each stride covered serious ground. You might think you're pulling away, but it's closing in before you realize what's happening. So if it didn't rely solely on speed, how did it hunt? 
Picture this. You're walking through a dense forest. From behind a curtain of giant ferns or the shadow of a cliff, it strikes. Ambush. That was its true strength. Surprise, combined with overwhelming size and force, was enough to send herds into chaos, splitting the weak from the strong. Or maybe it was even more strategic than that. With its laser-sharp vision, it could study a herd from a distance and single out the young, the old, or the stragglers. And when it finally made its move, when that first bite landed, that was the moment of truth. With a jaw built to crush bones, one chomp was often enough to cripple or kill. The prey didn't need to run far because it couldn't. The ecosystem T-Rex ruled was ancient North America, Laramidia, to be exact, during the late Cretaceous period. It was a world of lush, subtropical forests filled with towering conifers, dense ferns, and shadows deep enough to hide a predator the size of a bus. And in this overgrown kingdom, T-Rex was more than just a hunter. It was an apex tactician, blending patience, power, and precision to remain undisputed king of the prehistoric jungle. So, you've just been on a breathless journey, haven't you? From the initial terror to the growing curiosity as you began to unravel this intricate biological machine. Tyrannosaurus Rex is the convergence of bone-crushing power, heightened senses, and a body fine-tuned for absolute dominance. That's why, in the late Cretaceous ecosystem of North America, an adult T-Rex stood almost unchallenged. But T-Rex is more than just an efficient collection of anatomical traits. It's the ultimate symbol of natural power, a relic from a lost world teeming with creatures both magnificent and monstrous. Its supremacy lies not only in brute force, but in the everlasting grip it holds on the human imagination. So now, let me ask you, do you really think you could outrun a T-Rex? Thanks for watching, and see you next time for more adventures as we dive into the world of dinosaurs.